Hi, I'm Ty Murray, and this is my mini masterclass on how the bow can become an extension of your body. I love my right hand, and I love my right hand because I'm a human being, but I also love my right hand because I'm right-handed, so I use it for most things, right? I use my thumb to pick up things. I use my index finger to point at things. I use my two middle fingers to express myself when I'm talking, and I use my pinky for drinking tea, right? But when I'm playing the violin, my right hand becomes my bow, and my bow has to become my right hand. I use my bow as my voice when I'm playing on the instrument. Now, ideally, the stick cannot move without my help, without my manipulation. So when I have my hand, my right hand, on the frog of the violin bow, ideally, I am trying to start sentences and I'm trying to finish sentences. Sentences are filled with words, words are filled with letters, and letters have consonants and vowels. And all of this articulation that I am talking about has to happen with movement, right? I have movement in my shoulder, in my back. I have movement in my elbow. I have movement in my wrist. I have movement in all the joints of my fingers. When my hand goes on the bow, it's easy to lose that movement because I'm concentrated on how this is just a straight and an immovable object without me. I want to change that so that whenever I am trying to manipulate the movement of my bow, my fingers have as much freedom as possible. But my fingers can only have as much freedom as possible if I think of the movement all the way from the middle of my back, up through my shoulder blade, across my shoulder, down my upper arm, through the elbow, through the turning of the forearm, and the manipulation of my um, wrist. So, Somehow, if I imagine that my arm as a whip, and I do this, the movement, I imagine myself as Rudolf Nureyev, has to go all the way through, right? And somehow, if that doesn't go all the way through, then I lose control of my bow, right? But if I do this, that's all one motion, and, it's, and it actually, if you're watching this, you would imagine that my hand must be so tight. But in reality, I'm holding my bow very, very lightly. And what changes my ability to hold it lightly is the understanding of balance. So if I'm holding my bow in front of me right now like this, the reason why I'm able to keep it still is because I have an understanding of the relationship between my index finger and my pinky. All of the fingers in the middle, my thumb, my second finger, my third finger, are relatively stable, not really moving that much, right? But somehow, if I lose the balance between my index finger and my pinky, there it goes, the tip is gone. In order to raise it, I use my pinky. And if I wanted to go the other way, meaning to my right, then I have to use my pinky to change the balance with my first finger. So all throughout playing the violin, I'm really focused on how much movement I can retain using such a static um, tool, such as the bow. Um, and so what I invite all of you violinists out there to think about is how soft of a hand can you have? What kind of ball am I holding in my hand? Am I holding a baseball, which is very hard? Am I holding a tennis ball, which is slightly more squishy? Or am I holding maybe, well, squash ball is slightly in between those two things, right? But somehow, if I lose the ability to do this while I'm holding the bow, then that's when I lose control over my bow. So there have been a couple of terms that I've said repeatedly over this. Uh, manipulation, control, and relaxation, right? And the balance between those three things allow me to have balance over my bow and over eventually my sound, and what did I call it at the beginning? My voice. So my ability to speak on the instrument is also my ability to feel all of the muscles up and down this right side of my body. The next thing that I want you to think about is how you can be movable in your arm and keep the bow in the same position. So if you do this with me, 
try to have your tip point at the ceiling all the time? And how do I keep this, it always pointing at the ceiling, but yet my arm is moving, which means my fingers and hand are moving, right? Balance again. So find the balance in what you are doing with your bow, and then it becomes a much less static tool and an actual individual, and then can become an extension of your arm. So I love thinking of my right hand as my bow, as I said, and my bow is my right hand. Thank you very much.